Tory filth off of my pile. <laughs> no need to lose your temper. You know, make mistakes. <laughs> You're just doing this to annoy me, aren't you? Doing what? All this election work. You've never done it before. Well, I'm doing it now. You know that I'm Labour Party secretary for this ward. You're trying to undermine my credibility with the electorate. No, I'm not. I think it's most important the Conservative Party should win this by election. I'm going to do everything I can to help them. You're a traitor. You're a traitor to the working class. I ain't bleeding working class. <laughs> no, that's true. You're a punce. <laughs> like the rest of your party, living on the fruits of my labour. You, you parasite. No, I'm not. I'm management. <laughs> Well, all firms have managers and workers, and same with ours. You're the worker, I'm the management. You? Yeah, mate. Somebody's got to be in control. Ha! You couldn't control traffic in the Sahara Desert. <laughs> that is why this country is in a mess what it is in today. And all this inefficient management. I mean, the, 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 the Britain's boards is controlled by economic buffoons. That they come straight up from Cambridge with a first class honours degree in, in, in golfing and badminton and go straight onto the board of directors. It's disgraceful. That they won't be allowed to make the tea in Japan and Germany. They don't have tea breaks in Japan and Germany. <laughs> the workers have to work out there. They've forgotten now here. That's the trouble. And that's Harold Wilson's fault. Fill them full of load of old cobblers about them all being equal. The world belongs to them. That's how it does. And one of these days he's going to realise it. They're going to rise up and hose out their hands to their brothers across the sea and throw off their shackles and pull their shoulders back, hold their heads up high and take the old bleeding lot over. <laughs> <laughs> Not in this country, they aren't, mate. Do you know why? Because half of them is Tories. Every year, more and more of the working class are voting Conservative. It's getting very worrying for people like me. I mean, the class of person voting Tory now has gone right down the drain. <laughs> <laughs> Don't seem right that scruff-off council estates are allowed to vote for gentlemen like Sir Alec. <laughs> How you can sit there with your fundamental orifice hanging out of the back of your trousers <laughs> and talk like that, I really don't know. I just don't understand people like you. You, you get right up my shonker, you do. <laughs> I mean, sometimes I just want to give up. I mean, every time the Labour Party loses an election, I just want to give up. 
I mean, what is the point of keep on struggling? Yeah, you're a bad sport. Rotten loser. Dad, this isn't a game of cricket. Our future is at stake. Our future's never been brighter since Mr. Eats got in. Oh, God. <laughs> if it wasn't so pathetic, I would laugh. Mr. Heath? Oh, dear, oh, dear. Captain Nemo playing his organ as his boat slowly sinks down the way. <laughs> oh, what's the point in arguing with you, anyway? You don't know nothing about politics. Who don't? You don't. Have you read uh, Adam Smith's The Wealth of the Nations? No. George Bernard Shaw? No. Well, there you are, then. Well, that's about you've even heard of Karl Marx. Oh, yes, I have. He's the one played the harp. <laughs> <laughs> you ignorant little sod. <laughs> Karl Marx wrote a book called Das Capital. That's the greatest book ever written, eh? Here you are. Here it is. You want to read this, mate? It's all in here. I knew what he was talking about. This, this is the Bible of socialism. There's only one Bible I read, and that's that one up there. It's down there, propping the sideboard up. <laughs> well, it's been for the past 20 years. Shows how often you read it. Oh, I know it anyway. Of course. In that case, then, you will be uh, fully aware that Jesus Christ was, in fact, a socialist. <laughs> how dare you? <laughs> How dare you blaspheme in this house? Of course he was a socialist. I mean, everything he did, everything he preached, his every action, I was a socialist. Don't make him a socialist just because he shared out his loaves and Lillian Gish with the 5,000. <laughs> Lillian Gish? He did more than that. He slung the moneylenders right out of temple. Of course he did, and they were out to be in there anyway. Business should be conducted in buildings constructed for it. You wouldn't want to see a branch of Barclays Bank halfway up the nave of Canterbury Cathedral. <laughs> it's not the point what he was making. It was a, a, a specific rejection of the capitalist ethic. Shit. Oh, well, what's the point of talking to you? I mean, you're like the rest of your party, you are. Political dinosaurs. Unable to evolve, therefore doomed to extinction. Yeah, we chewed the heads off you last June, though, didn't we? <laughs> we told you right out of sight. We shall return, mate. And this this by-election will be a reaffirmation of faith in Harold Wilson and the principles of social democracy. And the decline, with my help, of the Labour Party fortunes is going to be stopped right here in Old Drum Lane, Shepherd's Bush West. We are on our way back, brother! Don't you call me brother, I'm your father! <laughs> Old men is brothers. Here you are, look at that. See, that's what I mean, look at that. Uh, Abdullah? Sing, Mr. and Mrs. Abdullah Singh. Manda, Manda, Hekka, Goon, Hassana. <laughs> Bloody silly names. <laughs> not really. I mean, no, not to them. I mean, Albert uh, Ladysmith uh, Steptoe <laughs> is just as outlandish over there. In fact, gets quite a few laughs over here. <laughs> well, I mean, look at it. Not one English name down our street. I don't know why they bother having by-elections round here at all. They ought just to appoint a high commissioner and have done with it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you'd love that, wouldn't you, eh? A gunboat anchored out the canal. Chuck, 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 woof, 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 woof. Lead you up the gold old road on an elephant. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> Sit him on the town hall steps and let them all dance up and down in front of him with you banging on the drum. Boom, did you, boom, did you, boom, boom. <laughs> He's on a great white queen up the road. You, you'd love that, wouldn't you? That's really you. You'd love a return to that. You've never really liked them, have you? Now, be honest. I get on all right with them. At least I know them all round here. Talk to them. You don't. You just talk about them. You that... never have anything to do with them. That's not true. I used to go out with that coloured bird. Oh, uh, that was no hardship, was it? She was the best-looking bird you ever had. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you liberals are all the same. Go out to the bird that looks like Lena Horn and you expect somebody to pat you on the back. You patronise them, you do. No, I don't patronise them. I love them like brothers. I'm always telling them not to worry. They're just as good as we are. <laughs> <laughs> well, me, I, I don't quite put it like that. I mean, I, I don't think like, uh, what? Well, like, uh, what a great man Gandhi was. And, and what a good cricket team they've got. <laughs> and, and now I like curry. Uh, and it's not all that long ago that we were illiterate as well. 
What road do you want? Ours. Old Drum Lane. So am I. I don't want your bother with Old Drum Lane for. You've got no chance there. Our canvas returns show 100% support for Labour. Apart from you, of course. Oh, that doesn't tally with our returns. Out of 48 householders in the street, 47 and a half are going to vote Tory. You're the only commie around here. <laughs> I'm not a commie. I'm a social democrat. Same thing. No, it isn't. We are fully prepared to tolerate an opposition party, as long as it doesn't include little fascist pigs like you. <laughs> Honestly, I don't know who's done your returns, but he must be a right carrot, whoever he is. Old Drum Lane has been solid Labour ever since universal suffrage was torn from a reluctant Tory administration. When did you do it? Yesterday. <laughs> so did we. What time? Two o'clock. Ah, we did ours at quarter past two. Are you suggesting that there was a hundred percent swing against us? <laughs> By the time I got to the bottom of the road. Precisely. That's what comes of telling them what a good cricket team they got. You got right up their nose. <laughs> well, you, I suppose, offered them all our jobs on the buses, with which you was acclaimed with gongs and fireworks the length of old drum line. Yeah, you wait till polling day. You'll see. You'll be as sick as Harold Wilson was when the furniture van pulled up. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I've got too much faith in a good sense of the British proletariat. Mears Cottage, Old Drum Lane, East. One for you. And one for you. <laughs> I warn you, Father, this is a marginal seat and the eyes of Great Britain will be upon it. And I will stop at nothing to see that the Labour Party regains at least one seat that it lost through an act of midsummer madness on the part of the electorate. Cobblers! <laughs> That, I take it, is a quote from your candidate's election address. <laughs> now, you'll forgive me, having run out of envelopes, I will go and deliver a good word to the people of Shepherd's Bush West. As your son and one who is uh, interested in your health and strength, I'm sorely tempted to deliver your uh, election communications for you. But as your implacable political opponent, you can go and get stuffed. <laughs> Farewell. I will not cease for mental fights. Nor shall my soul sleep in my hand till we have filled Jerusalem. Hello, Step John Chan. Best price is paid for old rags, woolen, scrap metal, brass, lead, zinc, copper and tin. Houses clear, no pianos, no builder debits. What? Who? The Conservative Party Committee Rooms. Oh, good afternoon, sir. Yeah, speaking. Oh, you'll be very welcome, sir. Yeah, I'll be in all day. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing you, sir. Uh, the election addresses? Oh, oh, they've all been done, sir. As a matter of fact, they're being delivered now. Think. I think it's ideal, ideal. Press will be very interested. Give the photographers a field day. Yes. I suppose it'll make a change from the semi-detached. Mm. Make every front page of the country. Oh, how's doing, gentlemen? Uh, Mr. Steptoe? Yeah? I'm delighted to meet you. Uh, my name's Cadwall, secretary of the local Conservative Party. I spoke to you on the telephone. Oh, yes. <laughs> how do you do? Uh, first of all, 
May I say how grateful we are for the invaluable assistance that you're giving us during this campaign? Not at all. It's my duty, isn't it? We've got to keep old Wilson and his red scum out, haven't we? Yes, quite. <laughs> quite. Uh, may I introduce uh, Mr. Peregrine de Burville from the Conservative Central Office? <laughs> oh, pleased to meet you, sir. My pleasure. As you know, Mr. Steptoe, this is a vital marginal seat and it is terribly important that we retain it. And so, Central Office are pulling out all the stops. All the big guns are coming down in support of our excellent choice of candidate, Mr... Gosling. Oh, Gosling, yes. <laughs> John, yes. A good man, good man. Yes, I'm saying all the big guns. In fact, the biggest gun of all is coming. What? Not precisely. I lead out the Right Honourable Edward Heath. Coming here to Shepherd's Bush? Yes. His Meet the People campaign paid handsome dividends in the general election, and we're sure it will be of equal value here. Oh, blimey. We haven't had a big lob down here since Wilfred Pickles had have a go at the tram depot. <laughs> yeah, well, um, no, no. Mr. Heath is spending an hour in the district, and he's expressed the desire to take tea with one of the residents. So very informal. Just a few dozen uh, reporters and photographers and television. You know the sort of thing. Yeah, good idea. He does that very well, Danny. Very natural. He seems to get on with everybody from the lowest to the highest in the land. God bless him. Yes, well, the point is that Mr. Heath has asked me to say that he would consider it a privilege if you would do him the honour of inviting him into your house to take tea with you. Me? Here? Coming here? Yes. To this place? Yes. No, oh, I couldn't ask him here. I mean, look at the place. It's in a shocking state. Oh, come, come now. Mr. Heath is a man of people. I'm sure he's been in worse places than this. <clears throat> <laughs> uh, I mean, I I'm sure he'll be absolutely enchanted with these quaint old world surroundings. What do you say? I can't say anything. I'm, I'm speechless. I I've never had such an honour bestowed on me in my whole life. Then you're quite amenable to the idea. I shall take great pride in, in extending my humble hospitality to one of the greatest men of our times. Capital, capital. Right there. Come along, hey, Cadwell. What, what, what kind of tea does he take? Mm. Oh, I'm sure he'll be quite happy to drink whatever you drink. I'll have to get an extra pint of milk in. Uh, mm. How many sugars? Mm. Well, well, just put it in the bowl. He'll help himself. I'll have to get a bowl. <laughs> we normally take it straight out of the packet. And some biscuits. What kind of biscuits does he like? Them uh, little chocolate banana ones is nice. Yeah, as you wish. Or custard creams. Or uh, those ones with a little bit of round jam in the middle. They're nice. You can dip them in your tea. <laughs> I think perhaps a plain one would be safer. <laughs> yeah. Too much fancy stuff might make him Uncle Dick. Hey! Perhaps he'd like a fried egg sandwich then. I <laughs> Now, better not. The yolk squirts out when you squeeze them. <laughs> Don't go to too much trouble. A cup of tea and a biscuit will be fine. Don't you worry. Leave it to me. I'll see he doesn't go home hungry. I know he hasn't got anybody to look after him. <laughs> right, then. Tomorrow afternoon around 4.30, on behalf of the Prime Minister, may I say that we are extremely grateful to you for inviting him. Not at all. He can bring Reggie Malden and old Enoch with me if he likes. We've plenty of chairs. I'll tell him. Good afternoon, Mr. Stepto. Teddy's coming to have tea with me. I'd better go and whitewash the bog out. <laughs> Like. I'm doing it out. It's a disgrace. You couldn't expect any decent people to use a place like this. Well, you never bothered before. Just tell me all my time, I get you hang one of them blue things, darn it. <laughs> there you are. How's it look? That looks very nice. That looks better than the house. <laughs> I think I'll move in here. You keep out of here. You're not going to use it until after he's gone. You can use the one down at the underground. <laughs> oh, who's coming? Ah, we're having a visitor. Toilet paper? 
We've never had toilet paper before. <laughs> Who is it? Who is coming? Wouldn't you like to know? The Yachting World? <laughs> the London Illustrated News? The Organist Weekly? <laughs> Who is it? Who's coming? Harold, we've been picked out. We've been honoured. I'll stop messing about. Who is it? I'll give you three guesses. The bank manager? No. <laughs> the vicar? No. Rockwell Wells? No. <laughs> I'll give up. Who is it? Teddy. <laughs> <laughs> Teddy's? Yeah. <laughs> Teddy. <laughs> right That's good, that. Here. <laughs> Teddy's? <laughs> what do you mean, Teddy? Well, I say, Teddy's coming to have tea with me tomorrow afternoon. What? Well, our Teddy's? Our Teddy's, not your Teddy's. Mr. Heath is coming here. Yeah, it's part of the election campaign. He picked us out. Isn't he wonderful? Who told you? I did. They were down. Uh, two knobs from the Tory party. It's all arranged. I know having you on. No, they're not. He's coming here tomorrow afternoon. I've ordered a pint of gold drop, a packet of water biscuits, and a jam sandwich. Right? Ted Heath is coming here to have tea with you. Yeah, he's touring the district. Yeah. I expect he wants to discuss the world situation with you. Yeah, but perhaps he wants you in his cabinet. They could do a lot worse. But God, he often has done. <laughs> oh, what a squalid tactical manoeuvre this is. Teddy coming to a junkyard. There's as much chance of that as Ian Paisley and the Pope going on an equinomical booze up. <laughs> Please yourself. There's the bloke's card. Conservative Party Central Office. It's all laid on. Half past four tomorrow afternoon. No, no, no. Not here. I can't come here. He can't have tea here. Not in the official residence of the Ward Secretary of the Labour Party. <laughs> we would lose all credibility. No, no, I'm sorry, he's not coming. He is. Nothing to do with you. It's my house. He is not coming here. He is. He may have wormed his way into Harold's house, but he is not coming into this house. I'm not sitting here all afternoon with those two great rows of tombstones flashing at me. <laughs> We don't want to see you anyway. It's me he's coming to chat with. You can clear off out of it. Is that your last word? Yes, it is. And there's nothing you can do about it. This is a private meeting between me and my leader. <laughs> Father, I must ask you once more to consider my position in this matter. I beg of you to cancel this ill-timed confrontation. Get knotted. <laughs> Very well. But I warn you, I will not take this deliberate slight and let it go unchallenged. I will not lie down before this act of naked aggression. I reserve the right to act as I think fit. What are you going to do? That is a matter between me and my conscience. You have been warned on your own head, be it. I'm going up to my room. I'm going to finish my article for the Clarion, attacking Mr Heath personally for his ambivalent and negative attitude to the Concord cocker. <laughs> I found this in a form of bed. <laughs> Are you going to pay for the hole in it? I'll show us how to build to ten down the street. <laughs> I decided to change my tactics. I've decided to stay here throughout the entire audience, if it lasts very long, which I doubt. What do you mean? Well, there won't be any photographs in the papers. Well, not of him, anyway. 
What are you talking about? What are you going to do? I'm going to wait until the photographers is assembled. In bed. It's up with the dressing gown. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Heap is about to see his first full frontal nude. <laughs> you wouldn't do it, Harold. Wouldn't I? <laughs> I intend to sit here throughout the entire visit, start naked. <laughs> Dolly Clackett will be arriving shortly, and she will also be suitably unclothed. <laughs> and for your entertainment, we shall be dancing a part de deux from the second act of Old Calcutta. <laughs> You'll be arrested by the security men. You'll be detained pending medical report. Not at all. It is the God-given right of every Englishman to lounge about his own stark naked if he so desires. <laughs> uh, past four. I think uh, the best thing you can do is to run along outside and stop him coming in, don't you? No bother. I'll go. <laughs> <laughs> Good afternoon. Is Mr. Albert Steptoe in? He is. Ah, Peregrine de Burville, Conservative Party Central Office. Oh, I'm in a great hurry, so I won't detain you. Would you please tell Mr. Steptoe, unfortunately, there's been a change of plans. The Prime Minister won't be able to visit him this afternoon. Oh. oh, he's in the area, but he's so far behind schedule, it'll be quite impossible for him to come here. I've never seen so many crowds, it's absolutely horrendous. Please convey my apologies to Mr. Steptoe and, and thank him for all his efforts. Good afternoon. Uh, just a minute. I mean, you do appreciate that he has been put to a lot of trouble, a lot of hard work. I mean, there's the decorating, the, the, my carpet. He, he's let out a fortune on the grub alone. I mean, Fortnum and Masons and Arids fans have been arriving all morning. <laughs> I mean, he must have laid out 60 quid at least. Yes, but I specified just tea and biscuits. Oh, come on. Your party's not hard up for a few bob, is it? I mean, blimey, Watney's alone gave you 20 grand. You haven't spent all that, have you? <laughs> yeah, what about ICI? How much did they send you? All right, all right. Send your bill in to me. Certainly. Thank you very mm. much. Oh, um, may I, um, uh, may I use your, your lav? <laughs> Back party? <laughs> Toilet. Oh, the water closet. <laughs> <laughs> By all means, help yourself. Oh, you. Not in here, out there. Oh. I'm afraid the affluent society hasn't caught up with our part of the world yet. Oh, yeah. oh. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> You didn't, Harold, did you? <laughs> not in front of Mr. Heath. <laughs> no, no, your embarrassment has been spared. He's not coming. Not coming? But I've spent his fortune on the, all this grub, and I even went yeah, to all, right, all right, they're sending you six, 30 quid to come. <laughs> I'm sorry he's not coming, really. This would have been one visit he wouldn't have forgot, I can tell you. Dolly Clackett had one or two things worked out I haven't even thought of in broad stairs yet. <laughs> <laughs> and I've got this... Oh, God! <laughs> Don't pull a chain! Don't pull a chain! I'm sorry, what's it meant for you? It meant for Mr. Heath. Well, not for Mr. Heath. I saw a 